It's a long song. Take a bit of time to read. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let the people here take a turn to read it. No one started mm -hmm. uh, until 14. Mm -hmm. Psalm 68, 1 to 14. Okay. 15, read it. 15 to 27. Benny, read the rest, okay? So. Mm -hmm. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. May you blow them away like smoke, as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God. But may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing. But the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you, God, went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, mm -hmm. the earth shook, the heavens poured down rain, before God, the one of Sinai, mm -hmm. before God, mm -hmm. the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. You gave abundant showers, O God. You refreshed your weary inheritance. Mm -hmm. Your people settled in it. And from your bounty, God, you provided for the poor. Let me add this to that. Said, He's a father to the fatherless, defender of the widows, for God is his holy dwelling. Now, who gets the family? Said, God sets the lonely families. Another footnote here said, The desolate in a homeland. Desolate means you don't have a, actually. You don't have any land, what it means. You know, you have no inheritance, what it means. Basically means one has no father who have an inheritance to give it. So this translation, the continuing time of the promised land, God parched out to his chosen people as their inheritance, right? So yeah. So then but the rebellious will have not portion to this. So it implies the obedient one to his word, to his calling, to his promise, to his covenant. That's the ones that are going to have a share in his inheritance. Then God said, I'm not going to make it a desert land, a waste land. I'm going to make it a prosperous land. I will send a shower to it, the former rain and land rain. Now, I think you understand the land in Egypt was not based on rain. It's across the Sahara Desert, cut through this river. So first there's no rain and location actually. So but so the agriculture is sustained by the river Nile to draw water, am I? You know, irrigation and uh, was draw water from the Nile. Depends on the flood season of Nile. But it's not behind the rain. So when God called him people out of the desert in that place, he said, I'm gonna give you a band of rain. You have perfect weather, isn't it? <laughs> you have early rain and later rain, right? So all through the years I will give you a different way to be a people in a different land. So and you have still have river run through it, you know. So, uh, so it's um, the rain in that light become a, a wonderful token of God's blessing to Joseph, Moses. Through Moses, God promised the what the water from the deep and the dew from heaven. So this is double portion. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Each time, most of the economy or livelihood of people depends on what the land produced. So it depends on the weather that God endowed and land, that location. And God said, I'm going to give you the best land. You know, so, which he did. So here is a, a re- the remuneration of the promise, the promised land, and want them to possess. Now they are become true inheritors or heirs of Abraham's promise. And I got to give to give, give to, to the people through Abraham. So anyway, move on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Lord announces the word. And the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng. Kings and armies flee in haste. The women at home divide the plunder. Even while you sleep among the sheep pens. The word women have different renderances. I'm not sure others see it. So one basically serve as a messenger, as a helper. So women in ancient times, a partner of the covenant, a helper of covenant. One supposed to handle the thing that is plundered or harvested again. So make a to actually it's a priest if you think about it. A picture of priests. So it's a it's not necessarily the woman do are the plunder, it's a priest do are the plunder. The first portion give to her, give to the Lord. You know, so therefore they have to do the selection. Who do it? The Levites going to help to select this plant the Lord, that plant the Lord. So after plunder the enemy on the way. Is that making sense to you? So is the harvest time. Who do the selection of what the servants offer as a first fruit to the Lord? The priest. So that's priestly duty. And the other the translator have a difficult to understand how this people under leadership, Moses with the priesthood said in it. Uh, and how they function, so if we're the confusion, continue to come around. So, anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. If you look at further, you will see the Ark of the Lord, that picture. Okay? This plunder, this, this, uh, this tribute is paid to the Lord. So, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Even while you sleep among the sheep pens, the wings of my dove are sheathed with silver, its feathers with shining gold. That's a picture of the tabernacle. When Gan stations the ark somewhere, he pitches the tabernacle, sends the offering, what brings there, and everybody kept around. There's a fire going on around them, right? Circle around. So this, uh, this is, a, this is a picture for their, their journey. Gan chooses, hey, let's, let's stay here. The people accordingly tabernacle around. They begin to do live, livelihood of a circle around them, right? The, the cooking campfire is a sign of where the priest are tent in a sense. So go ahead. That's an interesting translation yeah. of the word. Yeah. So it means the inhabitants of the house. Mm -hmm. So what house are we talking about? Is yes. the real question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say it is a it's actually a masculine noun. Oh. Not a femin feminine noun, even Not though feminine. it can refer it Which can, word? It's it's a word called naive in the, Hebrew. The woman you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, it I it see. actually doesn't say woman at all. It no, says no, no, no. Yeah. it mm. basically says those who remain behind. Yes. And but naive means the those who who keep that or uh, keep the whole of yes. the something about the it, it's the keepers of the flock. Oh, the, the flock. Yes. And and those who um, mm. inhabit the home. Inhabit the home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's supposed the priest do that. You know, so the mm -hmm. shepherd, the priest. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. When we don't have the concept of being a priest, I mean, it's interesting how. Inhibitors, what the word distracting, all translators can misunderstand what's really saying. For example, says the lonely in families. We apply to individuals. Lonely, they're actually slaves. You know, 
lonely is not lonely because we are human being lonely. For sure, we have those uh, your feelings. We don't have God. We don't belong to God's people. But uh, speaking about one, do not have any permanent dwelling place. You know, so don't belong to anybody. The slate can be sold, can be moved any time. It has no roots, no, no settlement in life. And God said, "No, you're not a slave. You are a legitimate member of my family. You're my people. You're my clan. You're my kinsman. Right? You're my people. So they're no longer slave. Slave has no identity. So you know, no citizenry, no, not member of any household." So God says, my Asian culture. So God said, no, I want you to be a member of my household, member of my people. And by the way, I want you to be a citizen in my land, right? in my kingdom. So uh, that's Paul's concept. He's talking about when he brings the kingdom from heaven down to earth, he claim uh, a set of part of people. He said, you are no longer aliens. You know, you're no longer strangers. But a God's member, of God's household, as citizens, is, is a kingdom, am I? So, yeah. There's a, there's a, uh, the same word is used in um, Exodus 15, mm. 3, and actually, or 15, 13, which says this, In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. Mm -hmm. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The holy dwelling. And oh, wow. the, the dwelling there, the holy dwelling, yes. is the same word. The same word. word. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. So. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. How, yeah. you know, certain. Translation. Translate. Well, yeah, it is. It is. There are translation issues. Uh, understanding. So <laughs> and then there are contextual issues yeah, because yeah. a lot of times the word is translated correctly. Uh, it's just understood wrong. Understand wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not in the appropriate context, cultural yes. context, or yes. even the context mm -hmm. of God's purpose and plan. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the real. Yes. <laughs> This is so straightforward. The, the whole yeah. song we're talking about leading mm -hmm. God's people through the wilderness to possess the promised land. Mm -hmm. so, you know, and He is the center of the the leading, right? So mm -hmm. He's a victory as well. So anyway, wow. Oh, we finish there. Okay. Now, Tim, you read that, you'll be amazed because that talk that next is a prophetic picture of apostle ministry. Mm -hmm. This class ministry. Do you finish now? Let me finish this portion. Yeah, yeah just one verse. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. When the Almighty scattered the kings in the land, it was like snow falling on Mount Zalman. <laughs> the mountains of Bashan are majestic mountains. Rugged are the mountains of Bashan. Why gaze and envy? O oh, rugged mountains, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, mm -hmm. where the Lord himself will dwell forever. Yeah. The chariots of God are tens of thousands, mm -hmm. and thousands of thousands. Mm -hmm. The Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary. There you go. When you ascended on high, you led captives in your train. You received gifts from men, even from the rebellious, that you, O Lord God, might dwell there. Mm. Praise be to the Lord, mm. to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Mm. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. <laughs> Surely God will crush the heads of his enemies, the hairy crowns of those who go on in their sins. The Lord says, I will bring them from Bashan. I will bring them from the depths of the sea that you may plunge your feet in the blood of your foes while the tongues of your dogs have their share. <laughs> I think the only place 
they mess some dog in the Bible. Is it ears? <laughs> Mm -hmm. he, talks dogs, about, yeah. he, he talks about breaking a dog's neck. Oh, there's other places. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with Jezebel, the dog's oh, head yeah, licked her blood. Yeah, yeah. Similar, that. some similar images. Oh, this is a good dog, though. <laughs> they all are, oh. actually. Does the dog that returns to its vomit? Vomit. That's oh, the only oh, negative oh, one. Oh, there's, okay, see. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Your procession has come into view, O oh God. The procession of my God and King into the sanctuary. Yes, in which the dead tabernacle. The people, you know, organized in procession. All the marches through the wilderness as God's chosen people, the ark will be for them. And it's, it's trifle into their ranks. It's okay. And who's the procession? That's the, oh. the priests. Yes. <laughs> yes. We talk about this later on. Mm -hmm. In front are the singers, after them the musicians, with them are the maidens playing tambourines. Praise God in the great congregation. Praise the Lord in the assembly of Israel. Do not forsake the assembly. Lean on the Hebrew book, use this, this as template. Do not forsake the heavenly assembly. Not as the church, per se, in the... In Whatever is incarnate in the mouth. It's Mount Zion. You know? okay. There is the little tribe of Benjamin leading them. There the great throngs of Judah's princes. And there the princes of Zebulun and of Naphtali. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Summon your power. God, show us your strength, our God, as you have done before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring you gifts. Rebuke the beast among the reeds, the herd of bulls among the cows of the nations. Humbled may the beast bring bars of silver. Scatter the nations who delight in war. Envoys will come from Egypt. So the beast among the reeds, who is that? That's Egypt, right? Because now we were surrounded by reeds. And that's, uh, mm. Kush will submit herself to God. Mm. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides across the highest heavens, the ancient heavens, mm. who thunders with mighty voice. Mm. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, mm. whose power is in the heavens. Mm. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. Mm. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Mm. Praise be to God. So, David had an uh, overview beyond his own time about what God did in the past, even people out of Egypt, then on Mount Sinai, Give the people to God through the priesthood. Give them the tabernacle. <laughs> they understand his reign, his mission was to restore that tabernacle. But above all, there will be a temple be erected on Mount Zion that is after him, right? And he saw a picture. God's people celebrate the daily timeline calls and with a holy procession ascend Mount Zion but it's all about Jerusalem you know so and uh, is that amazing then he saw this is more than a earthly thing but it's something come down from heaven right so the sky is above that's our renderings it's realms above the natural realm 
the heavenly and right regards the real names. So anyway, is that amazing? Then he saw this the conversions and consummation of fulfillment, God's plan towards the chosen people in this wonderful picture. May the Lord arise, Mrs. Enemy Scandal. <laughs> Indeed. Mm. You're the time to you, brother. Ten ten. It's good good for you. <laughs> um well Not sure which direction to go here. I don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> put you on the spot. Sorry. Mm. Um. Well, something that is I think at least bearing some weight on most people's minds are. You know, obviously, some of the things that are unfolding in the world, how that relates to God's work, you know, where is the Lord heading, what's going on. Uh, my understanding and impression is not that those events are distractions so much because God knows obviously what he's doing but I think it is very much a uh, a delusion for Christianity in relation to man's understanding or the, the most people's most believers understanding of the fruition of God's work and plan um uh, as, as God, man has always thought of God's blessing, provision, and progression of will to be directly correlated to a linear timeline of events and fulfillments. And those the perspective that mankind, and I mean all the way since the time of Abraham. The, think about the way that Abraham understood God's promise to him. He could not contextualize that promise without fulfillment for himself. And so God allowed Abraham in, es in essence, to fulfill his own efforts in pursuance of God's promises. So that was a singular example with Abraham and the birth of Ishmael, Ishmael and then finally Isaac. God, and the, the Apostle Paul, clearly explains that what God was doing there was giving us an example but that's always interesting because he said the same the, the Lord says and the apostles reviewed the same scenario with Israel mm -hmm. Israel was very much concerned with the fulfillment of God's purposes or promises let me put it that way I, I probably would not say purposes because they didn't truly understand God's purposes they heard and later years, they, they could read about God's promises. But they never really understood why God was doing what he was doing. What his end product was supposed to be. What, what he was going for. 
And so because they were keen to God's promises, they could only understand them in the context of what it would do for them. So for Abraham, you know, I'm supposed the, the promise of God is that I'm going to have a family and a great progeny of it that will eventually become, as God said, as numerous as the stars in the sky or the sand on the seashore. An uncountable number of descendants. But he had also previously expressed his concern and desire toward God that he had no he had no children. He had no son. And that's actually at the time that he 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 had a, a nephew and a servant that he had considered to pass on what was his. Especially after leaving Chaldea. He didn't really have anything. But God established him. And he had many, many cattle. And then God began to show him things. And But, but what he never had was a, a son to whom what he had would go. And that was a concern for him. For him. And so then ultimately God said, well, I actually have a lot more in store for you in my will. So what will be produced in you and through you will be far greater than yourself. And neither will it be for yourself. He actually says, through your seed, I will bless every nation, all peoples. So that had to be something beyond the desire of Abram, Abram to have a son. So God gave him the promise and said, well, you certainly will have a son and your seed will become a great nation. So then now Abram has the promise, but he doesn't know the purpose yet. He doesn't, that's one really interesting thing about the progression of God through the many uh, generations of history is that more is revealed to, it's like a greater fulfillment of the same people. So the people of God through history could be viewed as, as the, the, the mystery that Paul reveals, the man of Christ in development through the ages. So we have a, a pre-Israel in many ways is like the infant in the womb. The, the, the seed being conceived through and in the lives of the early patriarchs. We don't really see the birthing out of a greater presentation of the plan of God until after Christ. That was revealed in and through Christ and then through and following with the birth of or the initiation of the church, which this incredible mystery was unveiled. And that is, it wasn't just Israel. Or that what God in his heart had always initially with a specific people, but in another realm in a realm where there is neither slave nor free, Jew nor Gentile, male nor free male, female, a greater expression of a people who would still be able to be defined in all the same ways that Israel was and with all God's promises. Paul in Hebrews 12 look, looks at that and says, you know, those guys were not looking for a land. If they were, they could have gone back to the land. So there are still many, many arguments today about that very thing. Obviously, there's a war going on about it right now. And I'm not going to take any time to try and explain eschatology or uh, whatever is entailed in that in those, those discussions and arguments. And I do believe that Jerusalem will yet be the reigning place of Christ, but our understanding of God's people and God's purpose throughout history 
is above all of that. And, and Paul told us that pretty clearly, that the land we are waiting for and the promise that we are awaiting is a greater fulfillment of God's purpose, not just the fulfillment of his promises for us, what it means for us. So this, I would encourage any one of you that even in the, in the realm of personal prophecy, things that God has revealed over your own life personally, don't allow them to be so narrow that they don't include God's purpose. Because you may very well come short of a greater reality. In reality, that's the, that is where man, even God-fearing, God-pursuing man, has fallen short of God's glory all along throughout history. Is that he has taken to himself, for himself, God's promises. The way that the Apostle Paul looked back on those promises is that they were for all of us. And that even the shortcomings of the previous patriarchs and generations of Israel serve a greater purpose. So Abraham's efforts in the flesh to produce God's promise, while they did not, Ishmael was not God's promise. Son. But God purposed it so that we could learn from it. And so that a greater measure of his reality can be understood by a people not yet born. Mm. But every time God revealed something, every time there was a revelation, a greater revelation, not just a declaration of God's promise, but a greater revelation of his purpose then a greater responsibility was given to those upon whom that day of revelation was given. So there was no going back. And every time that was revealed, God called it a new day. Today, right now, this moment. So... We, we live in a time where Christianity is holding on to a, a, a great number of promises, but not necessarily understanding God's purposes. So we're eagerly waiting for the promise, but we don't, it's all for us. It's all for our own end. So we can have a release, so we can have a victory, so we can have some gain, whatever that may be. When these moments in time come to a, a, a point, it's, it's very beneficial to really humble, your, humble, humble yourself before God. Not an eager expectation of the promise. God gave a warning in some of the latter prophets saying, Woe to you who say, We can't wait for the day of the Lord. Mm. Well, the whole sentiment of the prophet is, You don't understand what that means. That's and you don't understand where you stand. That's in the book of Job, by the way. It's good. Mm -hmm. I think so. You're asking for something that you think is for your own benefit. Mm -hmm. ah, God, come and do this. For me. Redeem me. Redeem us. Save us out of our situation. Mm -hmm. Has that not long been the cry of God's people? Mm -hmm. Have you ever read Judges? It was, a, it was an endless cycle. It was through the kings. It was through the prophets. It was during the time of Christ. 
I mean, good grief, the people sat and cried out, Hosanna, save us, as the Messiah walked in front of them, or rode in front of them on a donkey, fulfilling the prophecy for which they cried out, but they had zero understanding of what they were asking for. Because they crucified him the next day. That's one of the very easy uh, discernible fruits of the religious spirit is self-fulfillment. To, to apply something to yourself. Even personal prophecy. God doesn't do anything outside his purposes. So if there is a promise for you, then it needs desperately to be sought out, understanding sought out in the context of God's will. To understand it and to line it up with his will. That's not just simply lining, lining it up with scriptures. Mm -hmm. Again, we live in a day where everyone can take the promises of God and show you them in scripture. That doesn't mean they have understanding. Only God gives that understanding. That, that, that only comes through the revelation of the Spirit of God. Mm. And most often, probably 98% of the time or more, only when a person or a people seek God for that understanding. In other words, it's not given unless that is what you're asking for. But see, religion is presumptuous. It has the promise. It presumes its own end. Let's go back to the wilderness. God said that when we go into the promised land, every step we take will be given to us. We will overcome every enemy. But see, they, they wanted that promise to be fulfilled in their own ends and means. So when the Lord said, go, the time of Joshua and Caleb, and they said, no. <laughs> and then he said, okay, you disobedient people, unbelieving then you're going to die in the desert. Because I gave you, I brought you to the point of delivery or overcoming, and you refused to move forward. So then they said, Oh, okay, we're sorry, we'll go. And God said, No, don't go now. And they said, No, we'll go anyway. Same type of understanding befell the latter kings prior to the exile. When the Babylonians were going to come and raid Jerusalem, Israel, other the area there. Well, what did they do? They clung on to what? God's promises. God promised he would have a king reigning on this throne. God promised his temple would be this. God promised no foe would come against us. And that's where the ifs in Scripture point to God's purposes. So then we can look back at Deuteronomy 28 and read about the blessings and curses of God. They, they indicate, they point at his purposes, not just his promises. If you do this, then I will bless. If you do not, well, then you'll be inviting judgment and death. Okay, but why? There you go. That's how you find God's purpose. But not why in general. Show me the scripture. Why to God, who is our father, who is a person, who desires to make his mind known, 
but is very rarely asked. Why? Well, we already got it. We know it. That's the, that's the contemporary conservative ideal. We don't need anything else. All we need is this word. And they, that's exactly what the Pharisees said. Mm. And the, the, the people of today will not hear the words of Jesus then. Mm. You think you have life in them. But they speak of me. God has revealed me in them. And you're rejecting me. Mm. So what do you really have? You have nothing. You know nothing. In all your knowledge, you know nothing. You can, you can, you have a, a, a perfect memory of every promise of God. But not any idea how he's going to fulfill them or to whom they belong. And that's, you know, I'm thinking of the, the, the testimony of, of the rich man and Lazarus. Well, my God, I, I can see it now. Let me go back and explain. God says, how many prophets have I sent? You, you have everything, right? No, it wouldn't matter. I could raise you from the dead. I could raise the prophets from the dead and they wouldn't believe. Mm. Mm. End time. There were two witnesses. Uh, the exact that. And people glee over their death. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the, the, two, the two witnesses, two witnesses. in Revelation. Mm. Which are in many ways unfolding before us. Because the testimony the testimony of God's ways is not being received. And Isaiah said, very, the Lord said to Isaiah, if they don't have the law and the testimony, they have nothing. In a spiritual dark place. They, they they have no part. Yes. My, my uh, reason for, for bringing this up is that there is so much agita agitation and excitement in the, I don't, I don't know that I would say in the, in, it is in the spirit too, but among and in the midst of Christianity. We're, we're in a time where many are, quote unquote, holding their breath and waiting for certain things to happen. So, so sort of World War to open up? Maybe. Third World War, <laughs> the rapture, whatever <laughs> it is. Oh, wow. Some fulfillment. Yeah. Everybody's pointing to the signs. Mm. There's a real sign then. Let, let me ask you. Mm. What happened when Herod heard mm. of the coming Messiah? That he, that the prophecy was being fulfilled. Where did he look? Remember King Herod in the time of Christ? He looked for the, 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 the scholarship of yeah. his land to try to find where it's fulfilled. They got killed the guy. <laughs> what a man. Did I spoil your just just No, he they, he was looking where everyone else thought the Messiah would come. Oh from. yeah. That's when he knew the prophet. In the high places. <laughs> the educated men, the powerful oh, people. That's shit. Yeah. Where is he? Where is he? So I can bring you. Where is he? But where did he not see? Bethlehem. The, the starry alignment. The humble abode. The thankless place. There was no room. 
and to whom was he revealed? It's an interesting correlation yes, here. It is a correlation, yes. Uh, I, I would like to go to the language. I'm not sure if there is uh, the same correlation there. But it says he was revealed to the shepherds. Well, we just read that those who take the plunder are those who keep the flocks. <laughs> That's what Psalm 68 just said. And it was God's pleasure to even have the heralds of heaven come and make that known. And this is for your guys. Bethlehem means the house of the Lord. Bethlehem is this designated place actually for shepherding the the, 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 the sheep sacrifices for the, yeah. for the temple service. That's so exactly right. Most likely the shepherd, they said, and other ones are supposed to shepherd the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, go ahead. Yeah. The keeping of the flocks. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is a lot of spiritual mm -hmm. depth and, and the symbolism there in mm -hmm. relation to the, the, the true nature of shepherding and the keeping of the flock and the sacrifice mm -hmm. that that being a mystery of discipleship mm -hmm. and bringing purity and holiness to God's people mm -hmm. so I want to bring that back to something that I mentioned a, a week or two ago mm. relating to the the tearing of God's promises mm. and whether or not he will fulfill them God is definitely going to fulfill his promise uh we, we, we looked previously in in Second uh, Peter three at the day of the Lord, and then I want to take a look at the uh, what what Peter the context of which Peter is speaking. Christians have a strange way of viewing biblical prophecy. The people are mocking, mocking. They, they see mm -hmm. a beginning and an end, mm -hmm. and then it's over. Mm -hmm. It has nothing. It has no use anymore. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, that's not the way Peter understood these prophecies. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he would not have referred them to them directly. So he says in verse two, "I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets." And actually, I want to look at a, a verse in chapter 1 of first Pe Second Peter so that we can understand further. An apostle's view of the scriptures. Not simply because he's labeled as an apostle. But because an apostle and the work of the apostolic is something that is directed from God himself. The, they are sent once. You want to get into a, a, a crazy word study. It's, it's much like the word. They are messengers. They are angels. <laughs> That'll mix up a lot of language for you in the scripture. Because of the many... Varying understandings and definitions. That's right. We call it Elohim sometimes. Elohim. <laughs> <That's, laughs> that'll it'll mess your mind up. But yeah. only if you don't understand God's purpose. But the judges, same words, and how He's going to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. But if you do understand, when the Lord does settle that in your heart and mind, mm -hmm. then there will be a lot of a lot of understanding of how God's going to fulfill His promises mm -hmm. and for what. So in chapter 1 and 19, he says this. We have the word of the prophets made more certain. And you will do well to pay attention to it. 
as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Mm. So this full revelation of God coming into a man. Mm. And above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. That's very, very strange. I don't think about that. <laughs> For mm. prophecy never had its origin in the will of man. Mm. But men spoke from God as they were carried along mm. by the Holy Spirit. That's right. Revelation tells us that the, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, what was Jesus' testimony? See, that's a very misinterpreted passage. Well, the testimony of Jesus is that he came and he was he was sinless and he died and he rose and you can believe. Well, actually, that wasn't Jesus' testimony. Jesus' testimony is what Jesus said about his father, his relationship to the father, and the kingdom. That was the testimony of Jesus. Did he die? Did he live a sinless life? Did he raise and ascend? Absolutely he did. But his testimony was, here's what God's doing. And I give myself wholly, fully, to its fulfillment. So now back in chapter 3, I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. It's interesting, the procession there, right? The prophets, the fulfillment, and then the, the passage the command given by our Lord through your apostles, mm -hmm. through those ones who have been sent to you. Mm -hmm. To do what? To unveil God's heart and purpose. Mm -hmm. And to draw you into that working power. Mm -hmm. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. That's interesting because I was just talking about the way that most people view God's promises. Mm -hmm. To their own ends. Mm -hmm. For their own fulfillment. For their own understanding. They will say, where is this coming? He promised. Mm -hmm. Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it did since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for a day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Who's going to be destroyed? Everything or the ungodly? But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, as a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow. He is precise. <laughs> the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness. Always slow to man. Always precision with God. Oh, forgive us, Lord. <laughs> he is patient with you. Yeah. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Verse 13. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. The home of righteousness. The household of righteousness. That's right. <laughs> what does that mean? 
What's the household of righteousness? It means that a new family, a new culture, a new way of life will be established in the earth. That's the new heavens and the new earth. So he says, since you're looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless and blameless and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul wrote to you, with the wisdom that God gave him. That sounds to me challenging. Why say you always say that kind of uh, attitude, at least, if not a doctrine? Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, I think that doctrine is easier to lay, lay down with Romans 11. Is that right? Yes. Where, where he talks about the grafting in of the branch. Oh, and he's see, like, do you sure. think you can't be cut off? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's many if you are unrighteous or uh, yeah. uh, uh, if you are disobedient, yeah. you will be cut off just like Israel was. So God's patience <laughs> implied that it can run out. Repentance. I might require repentance. Mm -hmm. Lead us repentance. And repentance then actualized or fulfill salvation. That's obviously the Peter you're talking about. I'm just Outside mm. though, it's just, um, yeah. Well, he says, don't be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position. Anyway, uh, so then looking back at the, the reference to some of these, Peter, the, the, some of the references that Peter's making prophetically. I, I think you might want to read the 16, actually. It's a very good one there. I'm 16, sorry, what? I finished the until 16. I mean. Because he recommended Paul. Paul, Paul was received. Mm -hmm. It's the same struggle, then, right? So yeah. Sometimes. So. He, Paul, writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand which ignorant and unstable people distort. What about today? <laughs> With Paul's letters. As they do other scriptures. Yes, there we go. To their own destruction. Oh, that's crazy. That's happening in the day Peter had to help the people around them, right? Mm -hmm. To crack this kind of uh, duation or confusion cause. Mm -hmm. Peter and Paul. Well, they're doing a lot of work. And John, the same thing, continue the letter. They struggled with what kind of people? Self-righteous people. Self-righteous people. I was right, because I know the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Oh, really not. Maybe not. <laughs> Self-righteous people. What about Martin Luther? That man exude self-righteousness in many ways. The same. So, so there's a lot of a false humility, false piety applied, and struggle with that as a contention. Mm -hmm. But look at the track is a record, always arguing, always contentious. There's no cooperation almost with others. But he's willing to cooperate with the prince of the world. Recently I studied the topic of nationalism said the rising up nationalism overtake today's meaning, the fundamental people understand is citizenship, being a people, is the rising of nationalism. Mm -hmm. And the rising of nationalism is on two scores drive that movement. Some historians or thinkers um, concluded. One is a corruption of the monarchies and and the church influence in the middle, dark age we call it. The other is a corruption and the confusion, the, the, the disruption, wars, bloodshed, conflict introduced because of marriage of reformative fractions of church anti with the princes of the world. Princes. The so protection that Catholic continue in war, in bloody war. You know, who made that happen? Who think those war, those princes, going to for the 
if you have noble cause for reforming the church. Is that how you reform the church? Is that how you build the people? Who gives the land those kind of tension and reason for the prince of Protestant states or political power to think we needed to eradicate those who don't agree with us? That's actually the reason why nation became founded. Because the continuity divided people. So eventually we have to separate the church from the states, those kind of things. But enough to say that the rising up of nationalism, people cannot be a people anymore. You know? People don't know how to be a people. So those are detrimental, my point is that. Why you would have bond together with the prince of the world, the political part of the world, to do your course of promoting God's purpose, rather than bond with some believers, even disagree with you or have a hard time, maybe with your, your will of doing things. Who you be friend with? Believers? Or those abuse <laughs> the faith? And the, 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 you know, so there is a preference there. <clears throat> There's accommodation there. So the reason to use police power or military power or political power to interact with those who disagree with you is a word where antichrist. Fundamentally not God. From the Old Testament, God tells us not give in to those unholy wars, right? Unrighteous war. To Christ Christ literally tell us don't kill. I mean, don't, 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 don't do those things. So, but, you know, the raging of those wars between the factions, Catholic, especially between Protestant, is a very reason Christianity has lost of credibility. It's, a, it's, a, it's a foundational value to, for the building of people. I mean, where this nation came from. The nation tried to savage itself, to find some faith to practice with those kind of inundations and toxic ways of doing things, and right? destructive things, doing things. That being said, I want to yield back. So this topic about understand the scripture in the right perspective, discern religious zeal or passions by man's soul on sanctified ways, demonic actually, as it's through, through the ages. <coughs> passionate people as today this nation Christianity is signing you know it's demonic it's the devil it's not God the chatters are strong they're whatever they're going on going to face the judgment of God you be very well served by the Lord to rescue yourself from those agitations and pressure I think that's a brother here trying to identify don't be oppressed by those people. The more that it is, the more the noise is, the more you get away from them. Don't get caught up in the frenzy. Yes, yes. There, there is, what I'm getting at is there is yet a work that God is fulfilling. Yes. And our burden of emphasis in life should not be on global events and our and our hope or anticipation of what they may mean in reality they mean nothing if god's purposes are not fulfilled and what god has waited through for through many generations prior to the existence of the united states prior to the empire of the British, the British Empire, mm. prior to the Ottoman Empire, mm. prior to the Babylonian Empire, <laughs> prior to the Egyptian Empire, mm. Mm. is to have a people for himself, yes. yeah. and and for them to operate and function in a certain way, mm. in unity. Within yes. God made a way for 
there to be a sanctuary in which he can dwell. He is waiting. His promise will not be delayed. But it's precise. So man always thinks we can move along God's promise. And every time there is either an Ichabod or an Ishmael. Those are the only two products. Neither one has God's blessing. Neither one receives God's inheritance. To register, what does the word Peter say? Is that rescue for that? The remedy for that? Repentance. You must repent from those ways. You must give up on that way to propose that we have the appropriate God's future and become God's people. Repentance. That oils, the word dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us, we don't want to wait in the verses. And that's the very yeah. thing that, that mm -hmm. Paul expresses in Hebrews 2. Mm -hmm. We must, to one, we must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, mm -hmm. so we do not drift away. What do you think he's referring to? <laughs> that's right. The prophets. Mm -hmm. Where if the message spoken by angels, by the sent ones was binding by the messengers and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation this salvation first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us the apostles those sent by the spirit by those who heard him God also testified to it by signs wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to His will. So, one of the references that Peter is making here is in mentioned in Habakkuk. Habakkuk complains to the Lord about what's going on in the world. That's right. How long God's going to tolerate it? Isn't this the time that you're supposed to do something, God? Yeah. Isn't this the time when you will fulfill your promises? Yeah. That's a, I mean, this is a prophet complaint. Yeah. But I want to share something. I remember back in Austin days, me and Tim, we just get to know each other. I would be able to exchange our understanding of the Bible, what the God's doing. When it came to me, we're heavy hearted with, with tears, you know, a sorrowful heart. He was mentioning this book to me. So, how God uses to comfort him to not worry about the evil in the world and concentrate what God is, is, is doing, you know. So, I think that I'm, I'm not so sure how that impact of that is. I think that's a change of course for you, really. Pay attention to what is important in in our walk with God. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, good. And I'm I'm reaching some sort of of a point here. Mm -hmm. So hey, tarry with me. <laughs> <laughs> Be patient. Mm -hmm. I will I will tell you when it's ready. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. That's what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, so the Lord replies to Habakkuk's complaint, mm -hmm. and he says, "Write down the revelation." And make it plain on tablets so that a herald or whoever reads it may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. So don't misinterpret appointed time. God's appointed times are not calendar days in a linear timeline. They will happen on one of those days or on a number of them in a season of time. Mm. But that's not how God sets his timetable. Mm. God doesn't run out of time. Mm. <laughs> he looks to fulfillments. So 
when he plants, when a farmer plants the vine and it produces its fruit, he would not even be able to tell you which day he will harvest. But he knows when the time has come. And then he appoints the harvesters to collect. Mm -hmm. So how does he do that? I remember one time down in Southern California, I visited a vineyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they have these special devices now where they can, they can pluck a single grape off a cluster. Mm -hmm. And they hold it to the sunlight. And, and, it, and, and the way the light filters through the fruit, this uh -huh. device can read the sugar content. Mm. So even with all today's technology, they still couldn't tell you, well, July 30, 30th wow. at 7 a.m. will be our <laughs> harvest day. Uh -huh. But as they, as they read the signs, as, as it's not just the reading of the signs. As the uh, crop matures, as the fruit ripens, the appointed time is made known. That's how God's timetable works. Because he is a gardener. He is the vine dresser. And he appoints the time of harvest. It's an appointed time. For the revelation awaits... So the promise is given, it's revealed, but who will know the day of its appointment? Well, that comes with understanding from the vine dresser. An appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger. So it's lingering why? Why do we, we wouldn't even know if it was lingering if we hadn't been given the promise, we wouldn't have anything to think about. So on man's timeline, God is late 100% of the time. Not 99%, not 10%, 100% of the time, God is late. Because man doesn't understand God's ways. Man has not sought out the counsel of God to know what he wants to accomplish. So when the, the later apostles look back and they have a greater understanding even than Habakkuk of this time, who's complaining to God and say, wait a minute, don't think that way. You don't understand how the prophets received what was given to them and you're not seeing how, man, God's, how, how mankind or God's people have interpreted God's promises for themselves all through history. Don't think that way. God has an appointed time. And how does this appointed time come to be? When there is fulfillment and fruition on his purposes and plans. No, never before. This never was going to happen until then. When did you think it was going to happen? That's how a father would speak to a son. When did you think I would give you this responsibility? <laughs> Not until you're ready for it. Mm. When did you think God was going to give the kingdom? Thank you, Lord. But there's some fantasy belief among Christianity that at, at whatever this day point time is in the calendar of man, in the linear timeline of man, we don't know it, but God knows it. And at that moment, all of a sudden, every imperfection, every rebellious heart is going to be made to be instantly non-rebellious. <laughs> the genie upstairs twinkled his nose and everybody was made right. We all see. You know, all of a sudden. Yet the scriptures talk about those same fulfillments and the fact that there are still a wicked and rebellious people on the earth. Those who turn away from God. Those whose hearts are hardened towards God. That the hearts of men will fail them. That the love of men will grow cold. That's not a sudden fix. Uh, oh no, that's all those unbelievers. 
except there are very, there are very few prophecies in the scripture that are that talk about the people who don't know God. Actually, the prophecies that some of the many of the prophecies about the people who don't know God say that they will come to know God on an easier way and pathway. They will they will be they will repent before God's people do. Yes. That's a massive dichotomy in Scripture. That's prophesied. All day long, I hold my hands out to an obstinate people. Mm. But I was found by those who weren't even looking for me. Mm. Mm. That's, that's the way God prophesies. I mean, not the way he prophesies. It's the way that he knows things work in man. <laughs> that's crazy. That's, that's, that's who I was. I'm <laughs> Though it linger, wait for it. Oh, Romans 8? Don't have to do it. You do your own. What is it? Romans 8, 17 through 25? To, to determine the time. And the house is here. Uh, it'll be the... What's the skill you use to measure time? You know, time skill. And it's funny because I read something about Darwinism. Talking about how to measure the time, the past. But through carbon dioxide, all... Fossil record, or well, sometimes they create it's called a molecular clock. You know, try to measure molecular time. clock. Molecular clock. I'm deviated. One billion years of deviation. <laughs> the whole earth has now came to be. It's already calculated. So some uh, ridiculous scientific <laughs> method. Uh, Calculation. Method. Yeah. Maybe. Time is relative. Yeah, Somebody the, said that. Yeah. <laughs> the literally the scale. The theory of relativity. Through James, whatever, decided the time variation was before the Earth created the James. <laughs> 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 the variation will go before the Earth came to be, and they want to measure the James where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> so, <sorry. laughs> so ridiculous. Then somehow they'll know how the Earth was created. Oh no, so they wanted to. To study the the James, I said. Mm -hmm. That's anyway. Go ahead. Well, let's look at it. This is Romans eight, in in starting in uh, yeah. in uh, seventeen. So, what's the sign for spiritual people to read at the end time? What's the sign? What events? Let's look at this. Uh, Jesus, come at the end time. Always concentrate your holy people. What do you do? Welcome. Well, the apostles mentioned many times always what kind of people will be. Mm -hmm. Strive for godliness. Be the people God please. Be righteous in the side. Be a real people. That's what we're looking for. And, and, and that's always a contest to try weeding to those kind of provisions. Now the other thing I want to just for arguments, if you want to find why Jesus the early apostles did not give us predictions. Why more than preach uh, through the ages of certain Christians think they are so smart and need, God need them to make predictions for the future? Why John, as a revelator, was only using allegorical or figurative speech speaking there? For sure, God can give a timeline that's just gonna have that happen. That's why He didn't. I propose to a very wise mind anybody weed into that precept, first they apply it to God's purpose concerning the truth of people. The second, most dangerous, is he might weed into some witchcraft, spiritualistic, unhealthy mind. The Bible talking about there's a spirit of Python. The young girl talking to you know, hey, Paul is the servant of the Lord. Whatever they're doing is from God. The word called Python called uh, what's the word? I forgot about it. Some some witchcraft is it? Mm. You know, some sorcery. Yeah, sorcery is a predicting feature. The alerts the predicting feature to cast your feature will look like, whether on a personal level or especially in the level garmented with Christian doctrine, whatever wording, that desire itself in wide open door for what? For the spirit sorcery to come in. 
it sounds spiritual, but they're not spiritual. Mm. So the Bible firmly warned that because not like modern day, most people don't believe spiritual world, don't spirit, don't believe spiritual influence. The Asian world, they treat this for granted, and most people turn to those kind of mediums or whatever the word practices for that kind of thing. So it's not uh, uncommon. This kind of um, understanding those things are separate from it. It's a modern invention, modern day invention. Only actually American Christianity has even did it. It's not even 200 years before the modern day, before European nations. So because of people don't think in a way that, you know, like after enlightenment, like scientific method being inaugurated as a pair of knowledge, empirical knowledge of being already as the uh, secured way to perceive the world, materialistic way you can take a hold. Those are all new to human experiences. You know, so, it, so therefore, when we talk about witchcraft, we're talking about the predicament. Most of the time in history, the information is not that you cannot do it. It's always expect to be done. <laughs> Today's American modern mind says that can never be done. That's not Asian mind. Asian mind actually. So therefore God gave a very strong admonishment and warning. Do not turn to certain sources for your duty in the future. Especially the essence of your own self. Or the enlarged self, maybe your people, your nation. It was kind of a predicament. Did God, does God give indication of future? The Bible full of it. Want us to know certain, but the, when you know it, it's about what God want to accomplish. What's really God want to accomplish? And always landed a chosen people, a elect people. It was, what are elect people look like? If you find people talk about the end time, talking about those things, but they don't talk about what God's people are supposed to be. Yeah. How that can help God's people to build up God's people. I mean, forget about them. This noises. Sorry, the same, okay? So they may know a lot of things, but why you build a ministry based on that? Do you really help your chosen group? Do you really build a community? Do you really help anybody know how to spiritually humble and, and, and spiritually grow? If that is not a result of your message and your your study, whatever. That man is not serving God's people. It's distraction to God's people. And the Bible clearly from the early apostles, from Jesus on, from everywhere, kind of cut them off. We consider them false teachers, false prophets even. So that is very, very important for us to understand what motivated people to want to know. Why is it so zealous want to know? So adamantly preserve, pr promote the idea they know, actually. How they know? Especially when they use tools, scholarship, speculation numbers, or word studies about those and tools. It's a facade. It's a garment they put on. Because God never tell people to use those tools to figure things out. God is God able to talk to you in the middle of the night. He can send an angel to you. Am I? Do we need the intrigue to maneuver the Bible to tell you this because the Bible says this is what it fixed in? God, if God did not do that through the early apostles, did not do that through his son, so why do you think he will rely on you for your mental agility and acrobats to figure this out? Think about it. What kind of messenger you want to be for the Lord? Is that really? Man has been doing that before Jesus came. And when Jesus come on the board, talk to them, teaching them to life work basic, grow like a spiritual baby, be a simple life, you know, so enter the narrow path, repent, you know. And they say, no, 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 we, we, we don't think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> we got us figured out. And so, so obviously you don't speak our language. 
You don't answer our questions. Jesus said, no, I'm not interested in answering your questions. You know, your whole set up, your agitation, your question, the whole thing you laid out are a false construct. The whole thing you laid out is a false construct. Let me give you some blunt of it. What do you think is Jesus interested in what Martin Luther presented in 1990 thesis? Really not. Or scholar want to know. A spiritual man do not present those thesis. He don't follow those frameworks. He divine revealed. He has different zeal, different passion for things. When those kind of things were revealing to us, what is a spiritual mind or the intellectual mind? What is a mind indoctrinated by man? Or the man seeking the ultimate truth from the Lord. The different ways approaches the scripture then. Today we have a clash. The Bible prophesies that the sons of Zion, can what? Zion. Divine revealed. This one belongs to Zion. You know, affirmed by Zion and in life by Zion. Will be against the sons of grace. And who was the sons of grace? The, a, a picture of a man. Pride with their intellect, the, the intelligence, without humbly really seeking for the right revelation. Thank you, Santi, guys. You know, so and when a man really lay down his intelligence, the first side mark is that he's not going to promote anything, especially on the bigger scale, things beyond himself, for the greater body of Christ, for example, something he never been taught by God. This is impossible. Because you don't want to harm and mislead people. Make sense to you? It's something you're going to promote, present, whatever you think is the right doctrine, the right vision, the right understanding, even prophecy. You're going to have some serious dialogue with God. You don't back that the process based on your intellectual agility. I read this, I figured out, I studied this. So what? The more you do it, the more I become very, very curious why you do that. It's a maze. You know, it's a maze. You cannot get out of it. But God is simple. God is not simple per se, but God is personal, am I? If you really ask, He will show you. He will tell you. And you will find people then sent by God, taught by God, will be naturally con uh, uh, con uh, conducted by him, like a conductor, right? <laughs> you know, uh, first facilitated by him, or cherished by him, this is the word, <laughs> to become your teacher, become your, 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 your voices. Recently I just registered this, very important for young people, do not be fascinated by big heads. Good speeches. Those people, very neighbored, think they have knowledge of the Bible. That sometimes is very dangerous, actually. You want to hear that people sincere, humble, broken. I'll give you an example. You can learn more for God, how to hear God, from uh, the places where study the reasons God gave to a king. Just a king. Give it to Nicole. Give it to Justin. Some of us have visions beyond their own personal application, right? And that's what we don't believe. To so study how those things, maybe God will give you understanding through the scripture or whatever. Study them, are they genuine or not? <laughs> are they really God given or not? I hope that's not some critical <laughs> to anybody. But in order to hear God and uh, so other vessels, if we don't have that ability, who are we to say, I know how to read the scripture by the Spirit? My mind, my discernment, my capacity to judge what is good or uh, and evil, what is right or wrong, has not been equipped with me. So if God gave you a living engagement, living case studies, I found it interesting. 
Many of us were distracted with this topic and that topic. But the Lord had given you something for you to partake. Amen. Make it to you. Actually give you exactly what to do. He told us what to do. <laughs> it's not one time. It's most on a weekly basis, monthly basis, and means your revelation, means your clarity and beginning to us. Yet, we continue to feel the pressure and explain ourselves to people who are not interested to hear God. This is the problem. They have to hear God themselves. We can't do the job to convince them if they are interested. They, say, they, they decidedly said what a God doing us is misleading and not God. Well, there is no, no reason I can, ex there is no way I can explain things to you. So it's this day. Young people, you need to really study the Bible, engage the spiritual life from a different venue almost. You must enter a different realm by different capacity. That being said, uh, let, let him continue the topic here. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So we're looking at Romans 8 and 17. Mm. Paul says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The suffering there is already suffering. <laughs> it's about the groaning, right? Something ready to burst out of you. The suffering is a birthing pain for you. You know, part of it. for sure we suffer in this life, but I don't think it's a persecution or hardship Paul was talking about. It. He wasn't true willing from the old life and the new life that is considered suffering. Some part of it is basically the discipline for righteousness from above. Good. Yeah, I think too. He's in these in these verses. He's referring to the waiting upon God to fulfill. Yes. So we feel that we're being buffered mm. by Satan and by God because mm. he's not doing what he said. <laughs> so we suffer. Sure. Yeah. We create our own suffering. Yes. Why? Because we don't understand God's process. Mm. If we understood that God's process is to take us through something, mm. then we would know we would have to go through something in order to get to the end mm. and not just expect the end mm. without having to go through. Yes. And he says, so what we have to go through is a necessity, mm. which he said, if we share in his sufferings, in order that the glory can be revealed in us. Mm -hmm. That's how we go to the, that's how we get to the end. Mm. For the creation, so here's another illustration. He's saying, actually, you're not the only ones waiting. <laughs> All creation yeah. is waiting in eager expectation, but here is what we're waiting for. Mm -hmm. What are we waiting for? The, the return of Christ? Are we waiting for the judgment of the nations? Mm -hmm. Are we waiting for mm -hmm. Satan to be cast down? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Another question. Mm -hmm. Will those things happen? That's yes, so that's the end. How will they come to be? What's the process? How will creation come to its place of completion? Well, it says the sons of God will be revealed. Mm. Reveal in us first that we reveal in the heavenly, right? To the creation. It's, it's actually, the, the word here is unveiling. unveiling. The word in the Greek is Apocalypse. <laughs> there you go. You want to know what the end time is? Yeah. The revelation of the sons of God. Yeah. Is it also the judgment of all things? Yeah. But yeah. what's the real fruit that we're looking for? We're continuing on this point. It's written in the comical. This is the gospel. This is what we're supposed to believe. <laughs> this is the message from the start. We're waiting for an end that we're not willing to pursue. Yes. 
It's, it's comical to me. We have to prove these things through the scriptures. Well, that's, it's good that they are proving the scriptures. <laughs> See? That's helpful. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the Christianity is a desi land, a desi womb through the ages. Now it proved to be true. Because with a sunset mess, it's a lost art, lost pursuit. Go ahead, right? Mm -hmm. So we can't we can't yeah. reach the end. Yeah. And so listen, this is this is the frustration. Yeah. Creation is suffering. There's a frustration. Yeah. Why can't we come to fulfillment? Mm -hmm. That's the groaning of even the earth. And I'm not only I'm not saying the earth is the only portion of creation. The angels. All the saints that have gone before us, the previous generations, they all long lean into this fulfillment. Yeah. For the creation was subjected to frustration not by its own choice, <laughs> but the by the will of the one who subjected it. We know that to be God. Yes. In hope that, why did he do it? <coughs> In hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom. How is it going to be released? That's a true ecstasy. <laughs> How is creation going to be released from its bondage to decay? <coughs> it's me. Mm. Wow. The sun is fading. The atmosphere is failing. Mm. The planets are spinning apart. The galaxies are going to collide. That star died. We saw it how many billions of years later. Whatever. Yeah. Creation is in decay. Trees grow old and die. People turn to dust. So how will creation, all creation, be freed from its bondage to decay? He, the answer is very clear. It's right there. Yeah. They will be freed when they are brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. So, does this not necessitate first that the children of God are liberated from their bondage to death? The covenant of death. Yes, it does. But it's not a simple... Mark on a page or moment in time. Yes. If it was, as Christianity currently says, that was all accomplished in Christ, yes, Christ did open the way. But the passage hasn't been traveled. Mm. Few travel that path. Mm. And God's actually not looking for one or two in history. Mm. He's not looking for a number, but he is looking for a people yes. who can become a source of revelation and light to the world and thereby <laughs> bring some, they become themselves the very source of life that replenishes or brings to fulfillment creation. Okay, I'm going to make a shock statement here. <laughs> to challenge something, the so Christian makes some so many statements as if they have serious validity and value, but they are actually false constructs. So one of the constructs is what happened. Certain people, teacher, we respect actually think so as well. But what happened to Israel is a thermometer and some parameter of what God is doing. No, and I were just talking about this last night. That may be true for the man of the world, but maybe not to heaven, to what God wants to do with his people. Mm -hmm. It's man of the world who tends to do things. Then the Christian to try crazy, endorses things, everything to do with the Israelites as a nation, Jewish people, we need absolutely have affiliation and care what God is doing there. But maybe China is also important, Russia is also important, if God's people are there, mm -hmm. if there are a cluster of songs, 
The true Israel. Exactly. The real people of God. Mm. You can't help that. If you don't know who you are, what God doing you with you as his chosen people. But we have distracted a certain church, uh, certain Christian branches, certain political, um, uh, whatever word, <laughs> fashions, whatever, has used this kind of uh, understanding mm -hmm. to to use as a standard to measure everything as a skill as a balance you must understand what happened there you must get into that or else you don't understand in time well I'm gonna propose read your Bible <laughs> really Pay more careful attention to the Pay word. Pay more attention, because I'm doing it. <laughs> How about discipleship? Mm -hmm. How about the mature sounds gone? Yeah. Where is the remnant? What kind of remnant are we talking about? Because God told us there could be a remnant, all right? There will be apostasy. There's the teachings and the distractions and all kind of idea will drive people to be busy bodies. But refuse to live a quiet and godly life. Huh? Quiet and godly life. I don't think a mad church is going to do that. <laughs> or could end the world and try to change the nation? We do want to evangelize and uh, <laughs> go wherever I want to do. But that kind of a joy. You know, for example, there's a great uh, myth. There's a revival in Argentina. I just read certain things about Argentina. Thank God, revive that nation, God bless everything going on. Argentina, in about 20, 30 years, has been full of strife, stupid leadership. Literally. Use the word stupid. Because they drive their own nation into great chaos. Today, it's a field state. Okay? You can see in the days to come soon the economy is going to default. One of the major in the 80s, one of the major storm for the financial world started as in 1994. So they pick up from Iraq, a Christian go there, help American Christians especially go there, and help start certain things. You know, God move obviously in desperate people, desperate situations. But the leadership of that movement had taken as it can transform a nation. And there's a video wow, promoting the world well from that group of people. Still people still linger that the great testament of God. What testament are you offering? But lawlessness, delusion. There is no God leadership in that nation, as far as we observed. Making sense to you? Right now, they literally begin to almost ready to endorse some right away, some very strange character. And that character, I think, is worth, worth dubers to begin with. I don't want to challenge political. But the people are so desperate. That kind of desperation is what driven Hitler to power. People speak things or do things in a very unconventional and even unreasonable way. And who opens that kind of things? Endorse those things? Those unwise Christians. If I don't have personal encounter with such people, I will not speak to you. I have encountered the major players even in those movements. They're all a show. They don't know what they're talking about. But follow witchcraft in what they do. As a Christian, Christian witchcraft. I remember one time this person came to me and said, God, if that's not you, shut it down. The woman ready to pray for me, he just literally literally shut down. He believed I shut down. Now once I would said, okay, every one of them. From that moment, when God brought into the circles, I had to ask God, is that really you? Is that the 
a wrong spirit, wrong vessel. The people literally shut down. And if you consider <laughs> the strange things I see, you will never think it's good. It's just terrible. Let me see something. The early days, I was a young believer, merely tapped into the things. In this little church, and I went to invited the first time with the new. And the, 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 the wife's lady was trying to be a prophet doing things. All those are from those circles, okay? And I just saw something very unclean about her. You know, you know the Jezebel spirit, that woman is a fallen Jezebel spirit. Unclean. And I don't want to touch it. At the same time, I was new to these things. I don't know, you know, I can't walk away with these things. But she began to lay hands on people to dial pray for people. I said, God, if that is you, not you, shut her down right now. <laughs> was that lady ready to just move on, right? <laughs> Through the aisles. She suddenly turned around. Her countenance has literally changed, be darkened. She's like a lost her mind, almost. And she turned around, sitting on the chair, there's an empty chair by the aisle, sitting there, don't know what happened. I was looking there with amazement. Mm. As it's a bundle of people, I and mean, not big church, just 30, 40 mm. people. I mean, they were excited, you know, wanted to do this prophecy movements. And here I am, a new believer, a inexperienced thing. I said, how, at least I have caution, said, but that's not you, God. I don't want the you know, holy things. You know, defile things that touch me. I don't want anybody like that to, to lay hands on me. Shut it down. And God did that. Now, if it's once like that, I would just think it's a strange feeling that something happened. Every time. And I went to many circles like that. Every time. The minister could have had to bypass me. They don't dare look at me. They should have had one as well. That's something strange. I want to tell you something. Those are the things that drive Christianity in the prophetic, in the charismatic today. I don't want to be confrontational, but uh, you know, try to be not take on our job to, to judge people, <laughs> to tear down anything. But I want you young people at our community to understand what are you really being safeguarded from. You don't want to go to the circle, spend other 10 years, 20 years to come recognize, oh my, this is getting nowhere. Uh, Andy is some kind of <laughs> health I can experience him, right? So, yeah. Too, yeah. I'm sorry, he's a man. Yeah. Man, I don't want to know his background. John went through that, and Tim and I went through that a little bit. You know, so, I mean, it's terrible. They, they suck in to many good hearted God loving people. I mean, literally, a lot of people really want to serve the Lord, really want to do the best, for, but these people just you know, misused, mislead that kind of passion. And you want something eventually dissipated at this point, people. Make a sense here? You know, so, that being said, I want the team to continue. So, mm -hmm. So that's the, the freedom given. The fruition comes with the fulfillment in the sons. So he continues, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. So this is still going on. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit. So that's not the whole harvest, but it's the indication of what's coming. Mm -hmm. And the first portion of yes. it. Grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons. The redemption of our bodies. The word adoption here we've talked about before, but mm -hmm. it really means for our placement as sons. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. It's not a good English word mm -hmm. because it has too many connotations in the modern world. Mm -hmm for adopting children and whatever else. Mm -hmm. Placement as sons. If you will, installment. 
mm -hmm. uh, in style. Put in your appointed place. Yes. That's when Jesus said in Luke somewhere, when the Trinity to come back, said, make sure your name are written in heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. And yes, there is yet to come the redemption of our bodies. Mm -hmm. So those come together. For in this hope we are saved. We were saved. Mm -hmm. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Mm -hmm. Who hopes for what they he already has. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Now that is yes. to be yes. the posture of God's people in relation to his promises. Yes. yes. Why does God give a promise if he's not gonna if he's gonna make us tarry and struggle and strive over it? Mm -hmm. So that we have hope. Yes. But our hope should not turn into personal desire. Mm. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. So, what's the context here? Yes. God, fulfill your promises! Mm. Well, do you know what you're asking for? Are you asking for the end? Mm. Or are you asking to be sons? Because mm. I said the way to it mm. is that my sons are established yes that they come into their place Hallelujah. we don't wait for rapture we wait for maturity sonship in us paul said i labor as with childbirth so that christ can be fully for me in you. You. <laughs> that's his, his groaning he's not asking yes. for the day of the lord no yes. he's asking for the purpose of god to be mm. fulfilled the day of the Lord will come at its appointed time. Yes. Yes. So, again, we don't know what we're going to pray for. What is the Spirit interceding then? Mm. Well, I really need this provision or this healing, but I don't know how to ask for it. So the Spirit's going to ask for it for me. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. The Spirit prays according to God's will and purpose. Yes. What are we waiting for? It's a hope glory. Yes. Mm -hmm. With words that cannot, groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts no. knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints. How? For what they want? For the things that they think they need? For their timing and the fulfillment of the promises? Mm -hmm. Is that how the Spirit intercedes for us? He says how in this, the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance God's with God's will, this is Lord. not our will. Yes. The yes. prophecies and the promises didn't come by the will of man. Yes. That's why a son of God is neither coming forth by the will of man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We, 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 we miss all of this context <laughs> for true spiritual insight especially in this next verse uh, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose that word love is a weak on the Lord the word love? yeah those who wait on the Lord. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a quotation. I'm sorry. Turn with the first Corinthians too. So that's for you to understand. This mind of Christ. A different way to, to press, apply different maybe the context. But the essence is the same thing. The glory, am I? <laughs> Which is the wisdom for us. So in seven. In 2, 7. Uh, actually, from 6, let's read it fast. So we do, however, speak message wisdom on the material, but not the wisdom of this age, <laughs> this world, this cosmos, or the ruler of this age. Wow. I don't care what I'm going to have in the White House. <laughs> What's the next president going to be? I know. I don't want to wait into that conversation. And anybody we in that conversation is a red flag for me. 
You married as a private witchcraft. You don't understand. You're a witch. You carry the wrong spirit, stir the wrong passion, give God's people the wrong direction. Mm. That's called the false prophets. The more you assign yourself to that, and people treat a daily thing almost, weekly thing. <coughs> Every sermon talk about what happened to this personality in particular, what happened to that nation. Those are most likely, 99% are false prophets. You don't agree, gather a congregation, always feed them those kind of messages. A build a platform broadcast to the world as if somehow you have a special prophetic gift. What kind of people you are? Nonsense. Where your youth, the world tumbling. Your congregation urgently need spiritual nourishment. You feed them with the junk food, not po if not poisonous food. There's a spiritual famine in the land. Those are food that does not make anyone grow. Have they ever been good to be godly? Really not. Those are flock the most selfish people, maybe. Complacent, self-righteous, and falsely zealous. Deceive people because of apostasy. That's a sign of apostasy. Now that's what's weird. And, but they're doing it shamelessly. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And then in the middle of the Christians, we have no regard, no discernment, no true spiritual appetite. Crave your know, spirit, pure food, am I? Pure spiritual meal. No, we're not going to compete with those voices. No, we're not going to face those audiences. Because they're not God's people. Period. If you want the junk food, let them go. You know why that sounds crazy, huh? <laughs> it's real. If the people in, in your circle, in your life, leave them alone. Until God brings some sense to them, they can recoil from those things. Because those are delusions, to the Bible you mentioned in the book. Amen? Hallelujah. The, the carousel, what they call it, <laughs> in the circle around. Have a fun time, but get in the way. Now, you can reason with those people. The problem is that exactly their mind of reasoning got into trouble. So in the world you can reason with them. Can I make a sense to you? Can you reason with uh, anyone today sitting as a talk show host? They all pretty much know what they're doing. But the opinion changes all the day. I'm just saying, they have several time but absolutely no character. We all have fault, we all fall short. We all have some kind of maybe struggles. But there's a fundamental standard of whether you're a truthful man or not, a decent man or not. Don't pretend decency, don't pretend morality for me because deep down in the heart, I don't see anything really good getting there. Out of the bound is the heart of man, what? Speaks. So I want to know what's in your heart. Why you should care about those things? A good man speaks good things. You know, how lovely the dog is. I will talk about it. <laughs> because it really makes me excited. <laughs> my son, my brother, and is a good, good man. <laughs> that because, child was making progress, making him excited. But the world will say, that is, what are you talking about? That's a so, you know, everyday <coughs> thing. What a small skill it is. But what are you talking about? That's the most lively thing. If only every father in the world <laughs> excited about that, right? With the young ones. Will, the problem have, will we have this problem with education, with politics, with everything? No, we'll not have it. But we 
in which you know, all kinds of solution, all kind of dialogue, you use the word you use called the narrative, right? All kind of ideologies. But we refuse to practice simple things, practice things near us. We don't give due attention, good due honor, for example, Brother Andy in the greater outside world, nobody would think he's of any greater value for the kingdom of God. Not God look at you, brother. Not me look at you, I'm serious. Man with many speeches, many words, many books, many writings, <laughs> many library, whatever. They are the dumb ones, according to God. Because the sincere ones are practice with the here and they do it with the, all the decency, am I? All the heart. So run so is it. Run so is it. If I speak something not true, um, Mr. Chang, our brother, is a good example. <laughs> I mean, he will not give his soul that. You know, if something is just, uh, Brother Tin, I mean, you know, I'm not necessarily, I, I do have a strong personality, sometimes we're blunt as well, but I never see Tin. They may have an intensity with me engaged, I never argue with me. Ne never really even taking intense time things as a, it was as a personal grievance, as a personality clash. Why is that? Because they are seeking something better than win the battle of the day. They understand what a really meaningful fellowship, meaningful relation look like. And they understand what they really <coughs> need in God. Amen? Hallelujah. They really need in God. And those things now should come with a cheap, superficial dialogue. It's going to challenge your core, your being. It's going to divide your soul and marrow. It's going to put um, your appetites, your desires, your ways into the balance of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And bless the one then have someone to help you to go through the water, go through the fire. Am I? Do you want to go on your own? Oh, God with you in the middle of it. So, in essence, we need to find the true helpers in life. Amen? To build us a solid foundation. So the world is giving in to a deluge of evil and confusion, if not distractions. And our job is to secure a refuge. Be a strong tower. Be a stop, what is called, the, the, the uh, rampart, you know, for, for God's people. And by the way, it's not hiding away <coughs> in the spirit. You may think you're hiding away. Actually, the angel of the Lord celebrate. The ages, the desires of ages, the cry of all the saints in heaven and under through the ages. He's groaning, crying for the birthing out of true people. It's always God wants. So Abraham is a one man. When he left Babylon. About 99 years, I don't know what exactly year. He was still a father without any heirship. It's for man, that's for himself even. That's a failure. Oh, let's really think it's straight because I think brother Tim really gave us something very fundamental for us to turn the table of a narrative, of perspective. You are a chosen people. If somebody generally speaking about it, this, you know, use the Bible to conclude that, solve claiming it, that's a different story. We have every reason to challenge the doubt it, to work it out, whether that's true for us or not. But is that how we receive that calling? That definition, assignment of God. No, no, no. We see it again and again through sincere, honest, humble vessels and, <laughs> and God, God loving vessels, God serving vessels, the same message. 
the same message. So the same message through the years, the same message of the older ages, you know, so you know, TM John represent maybe Fighting Austin. The same information come out come out you guys, am I? You two gentlemen <laughs> rising up, but God has speak to you the same thing, right? So the same same information from this camp and from the people really have a heart for God's purpose for our people. They have the same message, the same message. It's like every weird turn, every corner turn, every character if God can use and willing to use to speak the same message. How wonderful that is. How blessed we are to know the will of the Lord in the living and anti way. How many people out there know? Get it? How many? <laughs> Worry for you. Worry for you. Now, turn with me to this. So in 7, 2 7 said, No. Two things are come to nothing. The wisdom that says, the ruler that says, coming to nothing. Then nada. It's a zero dust. No, we speak God's sacred wisdom. Wow, not of this world, huh? <laughs> I don't think they tell you what the next president is going to be in the White House. <laughs> That's classified the ruler of this world, am I? To the best. The wisdom that has been hidden, God destined. You want to know your destiny? This is your destiny. Destined for our glo whose glory? Your glory. Before time began. When this started, on what times, what the skill of time? God's skill. But well, that's internal mind. In display. None of the rulers of this age understood it. Man. <laughs> For with the hand, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it's written, Hallelujah, hold your hand. Bless the Lord. Amen. No one has seen. <laughs> no one has heard. Be a David, man. See the true feature. <laughs> true this, to, to see true assembly. No man has conceived. It's a gift. It's a fever. But God has prepared for those who allow him the word the words that quoted from Isaiah, so those who wait patiently on him. That's word as compared to have the fear of the Lord. Waiting for the glory to be revealed through the acquisition of the wisdom of God. Therefore you will have the spirit to keep you and to enable you to be enlightened, then you can have the, the words continue to have the mind of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And you must receive this from the Spirit for the Spirit of man. Only Spirit of man able to minister at this level. And the only Spirit of man able to receive these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 10 talk about this again. Jesus speaking to those who register in heaven. You know, the Spirit. And then he said, you know, then the spirit man, I'm mean, talking about it, you know, the, 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 the man of the world don't understand it. They think the foolish to them. Why are you not telling me what the next president is going to be? No, I don't want to. Even I know. Especially when he asked me, that's a cancel of me for me when I open the topic with you. You're the wrong audience, man. <laughs> you come to me for the wrong reason. Use the antithesis of my ministry. I don't care what you want, what do you think, what you need. All of you is dust and wind and puff. But I will turn to those who want God, want to know the truth, want to build up, grow solidly in God. That is the one I'm going to serve, lay down my life for. Amen? Hallelujah. No, I will not offer this pearl to swine. Amen? Hallelujah. The more you want to have a, the food like a swine, like dogs, the more I'm going to walk away from you because it smells bad. It smells bad. And to you, I will be a smell of death. Glory to God 
for that. But to those who learn God, I will be what? A sweet aroma of his life, his truth. That's the second glory thing. Part of the ministry of the glory of God come down from heaven. So be careful. Don't let every Christian, every Bible bashier, every Bible teacher to tell you they actually from God. We all struggle with that. We all have confidence. I know how to discern those things. Really not. Third is ability have to be acquired, matured into, so you can discern what is good and evil. And that affirmation, that ability is imparted, affirmed by heaven, by God Himself. Before you're able to do that, before God has showed you to do that. Why you think it's legit for me to agree with you, but dialogue with you? You're not even acquainted with the thing. Now you're ready for the baby food. But the Bible said us, you know, there will be a people with a hunger and thirst for righteousness. <coughs> and there are people in this time, there is a famine in the land. Famine in the land. Mm -hmm. And they want to use their own strength, own price, own gold or silver to buy it. But God said, no. Because you qualify those treasures, those things, with those terms, therefore you're refused. Your priests are unqualified to receive those things. They think are freely given. No price. Nothing. Just be the one however God wants to be, to be a, a child of His. Amen. To seeking pure, holy things. Yes, we all struggle. Yes, yes. I don't think Paul firmly <laughs> said, I'm complete, I'm perfect, the servants, in all the distance. But has that disqualified Paul, stop Paul to be a minister of the Lord, to write his epistles? Without a question, there's a dilemma in the struggle. He said that, am I? You know, he has a, this groaning in, he's, he's struggling, am I? He's distressed. Sometimes he said, I want to be well. I don't want to be me in the world. That's struggle. Doesn't mean he said I have no weakness in Christ Jesus, no confidence in Christ Jesus. I'm not trying to help in the Lord. So we need to reconcile those things in the way how God sees it. Amen? Not with our broken doctrine, broken experiences, our limited, confined viewpoint, try to read the Bible to appropriate those lives. We must start it from the son's point of view, the father's point of view, to look at how he chose a vessel and, and, and equip a vessel and use a vessel to do his holy work. I'm work glad for young people. But today I saw something. I want me to say to you guys, many young men, your life will not be the same. You're not going to be confused by wrong vision, wrong agitation. You have a, a very clear vision what God wants you to have, the beauty of God's keeping your life. Amen? Hallelujah. You see, God is very interested. He, 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 he treats his chosen people as above his eye. It's unfortunate people don't understand that. They continue to try to defile the eye. You know? uh, the apple of the eye is the most um, sensible, whatever, <laughs> part of the eye. So. You know, you can't have a dust on the speck there with me for long. So it's first a quick dealing with something trying to harm the eye. Make it sense to you? As soon as you get it there, you feel agitated, whatever, you're going to get out of it. So God is very quick in certain ways dealing with certain things. He don't need time to it. Get it? If you come to skin, you know, <laughs> get some dirt on your hair or whatever, you know, the fire closes, doesn't matter. But do not touch his eye. I'll just give you certain people. Do not touch God's chosen missiles. And so that chosen message is divine purpose being fulfilled. I don't care your doctrine about don't touch God's anointed but this is the nonsense. I mean it's, it's okay, you know, you can think in all the terms. <laughs> Depends on you. But do not touch the thing God chose and set apart for special purposes. Treat like the ark. 
She liked the holy item within the ark. Treat with some sense, sincere respect, and fear the Lord. And, and do not challenge that. But you're going to argue with God. You're going to be an Aaron and a Miran, but so literally set up for failure and shame. But Christians interested in this nation, in this popular Christianity, everybody wants to do that. It's like nobody really sincerely said, let me really learn a serious lesson and don't do that. But most of the ch agitation and attention said, oh, somehow we have to do that. But it's my right to do that. That's as an antithesis of what the hell the fear of the Lord means. And most of us can have you do it all day long. You don't need to do anything. So am I. I don't need to do anything. It's not my job to judge you. But it's my joy to warn you, am I? To tell you what I know, the differences. I'm the same. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Don't do those relationships on the common way. Don't bring to that level. Don't bring to a common humanity that, oh, that's how to reason, how to manage it. God forbid if we treat our young people rising for us with the same attitude. That's unfortunate our parents' generation treat us like that. That's unfortunate. That's a failure. Sin. When you're chosen, set by God, is serving God in holy and assigned mission. That's something to be proud of, to prize, to do everything you can to support that. And is that not your heart? I mean, I thank you and the lady doing a good job right now. Amen. Right? Hallelujah. Really delight with that. That's, that's normal. That's God's culture. That's God's culture. From the beginning to the end. We must understand to be a holy people what it means. And put it in practice. Put it in practice. Amen. Hallelujah. Team is absolutely called by God. Sent by God. It's sent by God. To what extent? To what audience? To what usage? That's not my concern. <laughs> my concern is that as long as with him, <laughs> at the time with him, I do my best with all my struggles and sometimes personal personality clashes to partner with him, to build that partnership, that friendship, that unison. John, same, everywhere, anywhere. Am I right? so? To, to help one another, you could one another. That's one of my concerns. Amen? Are we going to do some ministry? Are we going to do things? For sure we will. That's a vehicle. That the journey we set on through which this relationship can be forged and perfected. I want the young people to really invite that understanding in your heart. Okay? Now that relation, that formation is the number one endeavor. The kind of brotherhood, <laughs> that kind of partnership is beyond anything you do. It doesn't matter what subject you learn, what a, what a business you enjoy, what a fellowship or what a teaching uh, ministry, what, whatever going on. You know, it's not about that. It's about through all that, there's a relationship I want to build with my brother, with the one God sent to me or positioned me to work out a unified way to serve the Holy Father. And that is a job. That is a pattern. And when you have that, Jesus said, the whole world will know the difference. Amen? And that service is a, about doing discipleship. Amen? That's, that's basically going about the Father's business. But what is the beauty of our leadership and our brother and sister now come up? wrong is because we really began to pay attention to God's business in the sense in the sense a possibly discipleship mostly it has to be come down from heaven to say the possibly not from man's designation or understanding we on politics say it's a possibly it has to be a possibly I don't know the church can be operating without the possibly in Greece amen hallelujah it has to be sent from heaven it has to be done and this is the thing I want to restore, Tim, my life preference. I want to seal this door. 
You know, I want to seal this influx, the influence, continuing battering. What do we have to do? Now it's time for us to move on. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead. I'm going to finish my thought, yes, which was my basis of sharing. Mm -hmm. And that is that in all these things, God has shown us the way mm -hmm. and the means mm -hmm. by which his sovereign will is fulfilled. And that is through the establishment and the building up of his house. Mm -hmm. that, that there cannot be any fulfillment in creation mm -hmm. without that. Yes. So every promise waits for that fulfillment, yes. for that work to be done. Mm -hmm. There's still promises, but man will linger on in his impatience. Mm -hmm. And an anticipation of something that he will never receive if he doesn't work by the means that God has given to accomplish it. Yes. So, you know, there are so many biblical examples of mm -hmm. that. Now, I want to, before I pray, refer to this passage in Ezekiel. Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel chapter 12, and I would recommend reading chapter 13 after because it speaks extensively about false prophets mm. and what they produce and the de their demise as well as the demise of those who follow them. A lawless and scandal people. Chap uh, verse 21 of chapter 12 mm. in Ezekiel says this, mm. the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, what is this proverb you have in the land of Israel? So he quotes a regular proverb that is spoken among the Israelites. And here's the proverb. The days go by. Which and verse? This is verse 22 now 22. of chapter 12. Okay. Yeah. The days go by and every vision comes to nothing. Mm. So that's exactly what Peter's referring to. Mm. It's the same thing that Habakkuk said. Mm. Well, nothing ever changes. The visions never come to be. Mm. God's promises never bear fruit. So that became a proverb. Okay, let me give you a similar proverb today. It's a short prayer. Ah, oh, Lord, come quickly. What do we mean? Get us out of this situation. Fulfill your promise. Won't you ever do what you say? Lord, come quickly. The days go by and every vision comes to nothing. So he said, what about that? Ezekiel, go tell them this. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm going to put an end to this proverb. Mm -hmm. That proverb is not just a saying. Mm -hmm. He's not just saying no one will ever say it anymore. He's indicating where it came from. Why do people think that way? Mm. I'm going to put an end to this thinking. Yes. Mm. They will no longer quote it in Israel. Say to them, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. Mm. For there will be no more false visions or flattering divinations among the people of Israel. Oh, divination. That's the word I'm saying. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Divination, not... Um, no, sorcery, yeah, sorcery is yeah. something else. Anyway, but I, the Lord, will speak what I will, and it shall be fulfilled without delay. Mm. For in your days, you rebellious house, mm. I will fulfill whatever I say, declares the sovereign Lord. Mm. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, the house of Israel is saying, the vision he sees is for many years from now. Mm. And he prophesies about the distant future. Therefore say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the sovereign Lord. Hallelujah. So here we were at a time again, where as I mentioned, the, the people were claiming God's promises and refusing to walk in his ways. So why? They were being, this was just during the first part of the exile. 
when ba the, the first raid and siege of Babylon was coming to the land. And they said, oh, that's not going to happen. And Jeremiah came also. Oh, no, we're, 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 we're going to stay here. And he said, no, that's, that's a bad idea. Mm. You're going against the will of God. Mm. Now, I'm not pointing at judgment. Yes. What I'm pointing at is what will bring the fulfillment. Judgment will start in the house of the Lord. It will. Yeah. The Christianity, this nation going to tumble. And come to a place you can't even recognize the shape, the stand. It's coming very quickly. And we don't want to make false predicament, but that's obviously staring before our face. Everybody to see that the train begin to run to the demise, or the Titanic begin to sink. So, what the best solution of God's people, especially young people, but to tell you? That's a sinking ship that is a train around the cliff. Is that bad people for us? Bad voices? I, I think that's very much a celebrity thing. We're sober, unhappy, but we need to recognize what we see from, more importantly, what a car really see like into. It's not our attention, if you will, the leadership attention, to tell you what's wrong up there. The reason we want you to concentrate on what's important, what God is unfolding, what God gave to us. There's a rich table laid before us. Amen, hallelujah. Red is our ears, my brothers and sisters. If there is a pill, I tell you, just re examine the fruits, examine the content we would offer before you. Yeah. And rejoice in that. Do not use old standard, old wine skin, old expectations, old measurements. The way you brought up may be a problem as a preacher. What they want, what they think, what exciting them, that advertise like a childish if not unruly, uninformed. Amen, hallelujah. Amen. Start anew, start, put the roots down. Amen, bear fruits. And so, uh, especially for the good of young people, right? We got the sun somewhere about our generation, with the young generation rising before us, to cut the difference. I use the word cut difference. But because it must cut, it's not a big difference. <laughs> you have to learn to cut, cut the cord, cut the difference. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when you when you read chapter thirteen, um, you know there's a it's a a prophecy against false prophets and against those who are misled by them, and then that being in the midst of God's people, and then he finishes uh, in the last few verses in verse twenty the latter part he says, "I will set free the people that you ensnare like birds." I will tear off your veils and save my people from your hands, and they will no longer fall prey to your power. This is the power of this divination and witchcraft. Witchcraft. Then you will know that I am the Lord, because you disheartened the righteous with your lies, when I had brought them no grief, and because you encouraged the wicked not to turn from their evil ways. And so save their lives. Repentance. Mm. Therefore, you will no longer see false visions or practice divination. I will save my people from your hands, and then you will know that I'm the Lord. Lord. Bless the Lord. Mm. Lord, we we come.